In today's brief video, I wanna to talk to you guys about three areas of addiction recovery that deserve a lot more attention than I've given them here on our Addiction Mindset Recovery Coaching YouTube channel. That includes love, gratitude, and living a life of authenticity. If you've followed me for a while now, you know that I talk about sobriety as a practice or as a discipline. And I believe firmly that emphasizing love, gratitude, and living a life of authenticity is an incredible way of improving the practice or discipline of sobriety. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is Dr. Frank. I'm the founder of Addiction Mindset Recovery Coaching Programs, which are dedicated to helping people quit nicotine, THC, energy drinks, and adult media content, substances I once struggled with. If you want to learn more about our free and paid coaching resources, be sure to check out the pinned comment or the video description at the end of today's video. Let's start with talking about love. Um, and this doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be with a significant other or be with someone else that you love. We could be talking about self-love and self-respect. From my experience with addiction to various substances, obviously there was clearly the standpoint of self-harm. I was hurting myself physically, I was hurting myself psychologically, I was hurting myself arguably even spiritually in many, many ways. And addiction, I think, is the opposite of self-love. Self-love, I would define as taking care of one's self. And love is one of those things that's been shown to release dopamine, that's been shown to help people live at a higher frequency or a higher vibration, if you will. And practicing love on a regular routine basis is one of those traits that they find among, I don't want to say successful people, but I say, I'll say people that tend to be a little bit on the happier side of things. Now, of course, if those of you who have followed, you guys know I just had a, a baby, me and my wife. And it's incredible. You never think you could love something so much as having a child. I, I heard people say that before and I didn't believe that. But it was through self-love and taking care of myself physically, mentally, putting down the alcohol, putting down the weed, putting down the nicotine that led to me developing that relationship with my wife because it allowed me to give more of myself, which eventually led to the creation or the start of our now, our now new family member. So love is one of those things that I think if you can practice it, it's worth practicing. And I'll say this too, you know, I enjoy being married. I enjoy being in a relationship. That's, that's something that I'm cut out for. Not everyone is, and I understand that. But for me, having a relationship was actually a very important part of my addiction recovery. I know early on in sobriety, they recommend not dating, but I'm going to be honest. I was, I was dating pretty much throughout my entire recovery process and finding the right person, the person who uh, builds me up on a regular basis, the person who motivates me, the person who pushes me to do better, finding a person that doesn't drink alcohol, that doesn't smoke weed, that doesn't do drugs. It has been and was a huge part of my addiction recovery. But I want to make something very clear because I make these community posts where I show photos of my family and my wife and all this stuff. And I didn't start there, right? It was sobriety that led me to that point. It wasn't, oh, I, I found, you know, love or had a child and then decided to get sober. I got sober well before that. And it was through self-love and improving my own physical health and my own mental health, which allowed me to give more to that significant other that I was eventually going to meet my now wife, that I found myself in that relationship. So I don't want anyone to watch us and think, oh, well, you're married, you have a kid, it's easy for you to say. That was not always the case, and I can't emphasize that enough. The next thing is gratitude. This is something that I'm constantly working on. This is kind of one of my goals throughout the years to have more gratitude. Now, there's two ways to think of gratitude. Gratitude can be uh, being grateful for the things that you have. And I mentioned in my community post a really simple way to start practicing gratitude. And I use the example of saying, oh my God, I'm starving, I'm so hungry. And then if you pause and think for a second, there's, I think it's between five and 13 people every minute 
who are going to die of acute starvation. Um, I'm certainly, I'm fortunate enough not to be one of those people. And sometimes I lose perspective on how lucky, and I just mean by dumb luck, uh, that, that, I've, that I've wound up not, not to be in that situation, right? Just the fact that I was born into a family that had some money, the fact that I was born into a community where we have food stores, born into a country where we have such a surplus of food, that that was all luck, largely, that I wound up where I am in that case. There's, there's no way around that. And, and sometimes I lose perspective on that. I remember just the other day I was food shopping and I was super frustrated because it was so busy at the grocery store. And I was like, oh my God, I got to lug all these groceries into my house and put them away. And I had to take a moment and remind myself like, wow, man, you're really complaining because you're so lucky that you get to go to a grocery store where there's a surplus of food, where you get to go home to your nice refrigerator and put your food in it to keep it cold so you're not going to wake up starving the next day. Sometimes we lose perspective on things. So that's, that's one sense of gratitude. And I think by starting to be grateful for, for the things that you currently have in your life, even if it's as simple as a bed, a roof over your head, whatever it may be, is, is a good step in sobriety and recovery. Now, there's also gratitude that involves being grateful for the things that you have, but putting on a display of gratefulness. And this is what I mean by that. I mean being grateful for your ability to speak, being grateful for your ability to get up each day and have the physical capabilities to walk on two feet, if that applies to you. Being grateful for the health that you have, being grateful for the job that you have. I practice gratitude largely through making videos like this to help other people. I think it would be a travesty to have the experience that I have, uh, to have the knowledge that I have, and not share it with other people. I would actually view that as a very greedy thing. Although, of course, I make money on my programs. Of course, we monetize our YouTube channel. It's a business. We have to in order to survive it would be wrong of me not to share my experience. And I really felt that way. When I started this company, a lot of people reached out and they said, this is horrible, take your videos off of TikTok, you're gonna damage your, 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 um, your chiropractic offices, you're gonna damage your reputation online, no one's gonna wanna talk to you or see you after they learn you struggled with addiction. And I sat down and I really thought about that, I really thought about not doing this, especially with all the hate I got early on in, in this journey, now it's mostly love, but I had a lot of haters. And I sat down and I thought to myself, you know, it'd be, it'd be a sin not to share this experience with others and try and help others. I have the, the speaking ability to do so. I have the means with a phone and a camera to do so. I have the physical capabilities to do so. I have to do this. And that's how I practice gratitude to a large extent. Uh, I exercise every day. Be, or I try my best to because I'm thankful that I have the physical capabilities to get up out of bed and go do those things because I recognize that that some people don't have that. So using the traits that you have, either mental, physical, speaking abilities, writing abilities, the experiences that I've lived through, I've learned to be grateful for about those things, the good and the bad, through my sharing with others. So that's largely how I practice gratitude. Now I need to work on, you know, having gratitude for like the car I drive and the house I live in and the, the things that I have because I'm someone who always wants more and more and more and more and more. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't think I'm ever going to be fully content. I'm just not built that way. But it, it, it would help if I could sit down and say, you know, this is pretty awesome. Gratitude. Now the last one is authenticity. And this is referring to living a life, I think, of truthfulness, but a life of authenticity more involves living up to your own potential, the person that you see yourself as, and living up to the things that you are capable of accomplishing. I was not living an authentic life when I was doing drugs. Uh, I knew the entire time that that was not me. I knew that my addiction was not a representation of the person that I was or the person that I was wanting to become in the future. And once I realized that 
and I started to live a more authentic life. So putting down the alcohol, putting down the weed, putting down you know the cigarettes and the vape products and the, and, and the tobacco products, I started to live more authentic to the person that I knew I was, a person that valued their physical health, a person that valued their mental health, a person that valued the money that I was working you know, for four different jobs to try and make early on in my career. I knew the whole time that uh, the person that valued their family and their relationships, a person that valued their time, I wasn't living authentically because I wasn't putting the effort and the dedication into those aspects of my life. I wasn't living up to the person that I knew I was capable of becoming. And that, that's essentially equivalent to living a lie. And living a lie, living a life of a person that you aren't, right? Have you ever had to be around a friend group and pretend to be someone that you're not, or maybe with a significant other, pretend to be someone that you're not? It's taxing. And, and what does that do, that lack of authenticity? It feeds into dishonesty. It feeds into a lack of self-trust and self-worth. And what, what is dishonesty? What is a lack of self-trust and self-worth? It's fuel. It's food to further the addiction. And then when we're not living authentically, we're not grateful for the things that we have. And when we're not living authentically and when we're not grateful for that, the, the things that we have, I think it develops this weird cycle of almost self-loathing and to an extent self-hatred. That's why we see so much suicidal ideation and addiction, uh, a, a rapidly growing problem too among high concentration THC can can cannabis consumers, especially in young adult males. Um, it's, it's very, very sad what we're seeing happen with that. But this is the cycle of addiction. Not living authentic to self, not showing gratitude by using the traits and capabilities that, that we should be using to help others, to share our story, and then ultimately that resulting in self-loathing and self-hatred. And how do we cope with all those negative emotions? We do what we know how to do best. We do what we've trained ourselves to do. And that's consume more of a drug, consume more of a substance. So if you're thinking about quitting, if you're on your road of sobriety and recovery, I recommend you start to practice gratitude, love, whether it's through the expression to someone else or certainly starting with a love for oneself, and then practicing living more authentic to yourself. And you can do that by just being honest, being honest with others and being honest with yourself. If you check out the book, I linked it in the video description by Dr. Anna Lemke, Dopamine Nation. She talks a lot about the importance of truth telling and living a life of authenticity and the positive impacts that that has on dopamine. A, a lack of authenticity, a lack of honesty, damages dopamine production. It hurts us um, in, in ways that I don't even think we realize because we're so blinded by the substances and addiction. Everything hurts us. If you found this video to help you out, be sure to check out the pinned comment or the video description to learn more about our one-on-one -on -one coaching programs or simply check out the free downloads. I have my 11 pillars of recovery download. I, I, I think that's a very nice compliment to this video if you enjoyed today's video. I'll see you guys in one of those two spots.